have no need to doubt God. God's word has been proven. It was God's will that none should be sick and suffer, and declared I will take all sickness away from thee. In the sixth sense of the term, I ask you tonight, are you a Christian? Faith is not something we have to get. It is something we already have. For the Lord, He is good. The anointing is the overflow of the life of Jesus. I will never forget to preach about the wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm Dr. Gene Bailey. Man, I am so glad you're with me today. I got something really special today I want to show you. But before I get to that, let me read again Acts 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, why did I read that? I wanted to emphasize that God in His Word tells us about young people, your young men, your daughters, your handmaidens, all of it. He's talking about the last great revival. And I want to uh, show you something special. This is an interview. What you're about to see is an interview done in the 70s, about, you know, quite a few years after, <laughs> after the revival had happened. Uh, an interview that... Ralph Workerson and Vincent Sinan did with two people uh, that were actually children at the revival. And as far as we know, at that point, they were the only two living relatives. They were in, well into their 70s. And they talk about being children in the Azusa Street revival. So I want to watch right along with you, and I want you to see what happened as they describe what happened at Azusa Street. Watch. This is an exciting day to be alive right here in Los Angeles, just a short ways from the city hall. And over there is a hotel, an old one, but this is an experience because this is the urban renewal site, but it's something else. A great movement took place right here on this spot. Dr. Vincent Sinan, one of the foremost authorities who wrote this book, Charismatic Bridges, has something to share with us today, who and what happened right here at this spot. From 1906, Ralph, until 1909, the Azusa Street Revival took place right on this open lot. It's open now, but one of the greatest revivals in church history because the worldwide Pentecostal movement had its beginning here as a worldwide force, and services went on day and night for three years in this place, and from this place, Spirit-baptized people went all over the world spreading the story of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I think we should introduce immediately our friends because it's a rare honor to have these people here with us. They were there when it happened. And we think of this as the movement that was started without a man. Jesus is the one who brought this movement into existence. Would you introduce these friends? Yes, first this is Miss Maddie Cummings, who was here at the beginning of the Azusa Street meeting as a young girl. And this is the Reverend Lawrence Cantley who is pastor of a Church of God in Christ in uh, Pasadena, in Pasadena, California. He was here at this great revival, and they are the two only known survivors that I know of who were here at that time. Now, were both of you acquainted at that time? Were you children here in the revival? Yes, we were. You yeah. knew each other? What did you call each other then? Uh, Lawrence. And, and Maddie. And Maddie. <laughs> yes. You played together. Son, yes. son Cadley. Son Cadley. And this, son. Was a, this was a Methodist church. This well, was yes. originally an uh, African Methodist church, and they built a new church on 8th and Town Avenue and rented this to Azusa Mission, and eventually Azusa bought it. Now you were, uh, wasn't it true that uh, both of you received tremendous healings here at this spot? Yes, I received healing. I was deaf, and I, God healed me, and now I can hear. How many years well, ago? Oh, that's been around 70 years ago now. Somebody said healings don't last. Oh, they do. And sometimes I think I hear too much, but thank <laughs> God for hearing. <laughs> you mean you really were, were deaf? Deaf, yes. I couldn't go to school. You could not go to school? Go to school, no. And what about you? Well, I had what we called TB in those days, and tuberculosis, and it was a terrible experience. 
And I heard that uh, there was a place uptown called Azusa Mission where they prayed for people and they got well. And I asked my mother to bring me and she eventually brought me. And through the laying on of hands and the prayer, God delivered me from that TB. And I have, know I'm delivered because of, not only because of the way I feel, but I have been examined by a lung specialist in World War I, and they said, nothing the matter with you, boy. Get out of here. Would you tell me how old you are? I'm 79 years old. Are last you really? November the 23rd, 1974. Hey, this is quite an exciting day to be alive, isn't it? Uh, Dr. Sign, what would you say this place looked like when the Holy Spirit began to fall? Well, I think these two could tell a lot more than I could because they were here. Well, you researched it, so I thought you might <laughs> Well, know. it was just a two-block street. Azusa Street is a very short street uh, near the city hall. It was in the downtown area. And Elder William J. Seymour had come from Texas to hold a revival here in a Nazarene church. But he preached a new experience, the baptism with the Holy Spirit accompanied by speaking with other tongues. Mm -hmm. And a revival broke out in the Asbury home on Bonnie Bray Street. People received this experience and crowds filled the streets. And then they came to find a church building and they found this old abandoned Methodist church building that had been used as a warehouse, a storage place, and I think a stable at one time too. And they found it, it was empty. It had no stained glass windows, no pews. They just had rough hewn uh, benches. But here, a worldwide revival began, and people came from all over the world to this spot to find out what they had. Could you tell us what the main experience was that attracted the people, Maddie? Well, I think first it was because they came and they began to speak in tongues, and people heard them speak in their own language. The Japanese, Chinese, and all the different nationalities, they heard them speak, and the gospel was preached to them. You mean they had not learned these languages? Oh, no, they had not learned because the Spirit of God filled them, and they really uh, knew what the people were talking about, and they too were saved. Now, you saw this and heard this with your own ears. I certainly did. Now, Dr. Simon, was this interracial, all different nationalities? The, the great thing, I believe, from studying the history of it was that people from all races and nations and tribes came here. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles yes. was a melting pot city. Right. Yeah. The pastor was a black man, mm -hmm. yes. and mostly blacks to start with, but soon Mexicans and Russians and Chinese and Japanese. And just like today. Just yes. like today. Yes. From all over the world came, and there was no distinction on race, was no, there? No, no, so nobody. Oh, it, one thing that was so nice, nobody ever said, well, you're black or you're white, but we were just children of God, rejoicing and praising God for all of his love and all of his mercy and his kindness for his healing. And that was what brought the people. What did they teach here uh, as, a, the, as a doctrine? Well, they taught that you must first be converted and then you must be sanctified. And God would fill you on a sanctified life with his precious Holy Spirit. And you would speak with tongues speak as, as tongue the evidence. Speak in tongues as the evidence, yes. And then other gifts would come like prophecy. Prophecy, healing, and other all the gifts in the Bible. It has Interpretation of tongues. And all, every, every, every gift that's uh, listed in the scripture was practiced right in Azusa Mission. Did it attract a lot of people? Oh, my, yes. We never heard the expression, we're going to have a white preacher preach for us today. It was Brother so and so, Brother Sign was going to preach today. And the people would begin in their heart to pray, Lord, give power to your word. I'm interested in the singing. What, what kind of singing did they do? Oh, they did all kinds of good singing. No music. There were no pianos at first, but they sang, the comforters come, oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found. And all songs like that, blessed assurance, deeper yet I pray, and just good old hymns. That's the kind of music we have. One happy, thing they happy, liked, happy one music. One thing they liked so much is where Jesus yeah. is, tis heaven, heaven there. Yes. Wasn't Jesus the center of this the revival? The center, yes. Oh, how I love Jesus was one of the main what about these crutches around on the wall? They were for people that came and was healed. And many times people were healed just by being prayed for, not laying on the hands all the time. But sometimes uh, Reverend Seymour would just reach and say, the Lord wants to heal somebody and whoever is here needs to be healed. And people were healed just like that because of the power of God. Did you have an upper room in yes. the building? We had an upper room and it was, uh, 
on this side of the building, and uh, that's where people would go and tarry. On the other side was sleeping quarters where Reverend Seymour used to sleep and have his uh, little uh, apartment there. But that upper room, I don't think it ever was empty because it went day and night. Somebody was there to pray for somebody all could the you, time. Could you tell us about Elder Seymour, the pastor of this mission? Uh, what, he was a black man. Yes. About 30 some years old from Texas. Uh -huh. And he came out here and uh, the Lord used this man to bring on this great revival. What did he look like and what did he preach like? Well, he didn't preach like the ministers preach today. He preached more just the good word from the power of God came upon him and he brought the power of God and uh, the power of God came upon him and he preached under the anointing of the power of God and that was so wonderful. We would like to know, Reverend Catlett, the typical type of service that you had here. What, how would they open the service and what would happen? Well, we opened with prayer and and uh, they would, we had no length specified time, I mean length of prayer. So whenever the spirit of the Lord would lift from prayer, would get up. Sometimes it'd be half an hour and sometimes longer. And it wasn't uh, the preacher prayed his little short prayer. It was the people all got together and prayed aloud. Amen. And not like we are now, said that God can't understand all that conglomeration. And I always tell the folks that I'm not the only one in one city praying. God hears everybody at the same well, time. Well, did they have Bible reading there too? Oh, we had scripture lessons and... and uh, everybody brought their Bible? Everybody. You knew a Pentecostal person regardless of where you saw them, whether they was going to work or going to a picnic, they always had a Bible. And it didn't put it in the purse or in the briefcase. It had it out so it could be seen. Now, what about this singing now? <laughs> oh, the singing was always so grand. But one little song is just, well, it's so wonderful for me. It's uh, Never Will I Forget the Day. It was in a gospel hall. Is this the one there, you wrote? Yes. You wrote, you wrote so? that? That is Wait, the one. Wait, why don't you sing it for Could you Let's two see. sing it? I believe both of you can. <laughs> Start it, Lawrence. No, you... <laughs> Never will I, I forget, forget the day it was in the gospel hall. There in deep contrition I on the Lord did call. He did not let me call in vain, but he washed my sins away. And from that hour he gave me power, and I know that he dwells within. Glory to God, for he dwells within my soul. Praise his dear name, he's made me fully whole. Glory to God, from his side I'll ne'er depart. For Jesus, my Savior, is the joy of my heart. Hey, I feel happy. You. She was raising her hand behind my back. Was she really? Oh, that's yes. powerful. Well, my yeah. God, were Amen. these people happy when they Oh, oh my. yes. Would they yes. shout and yeah, raise their hands and praise, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. It yes, seems, praise the Lord. It say. seems as though times oh, in my yes, young yes. days it would come in and look like you could just feel the power of God in the atmosphere. Oh, yes. And yes. tears would run down and all drop off my chin and everything. But the, the power of God was just here in mighty power. People. Young children, girls, and boys, girls mostly, would get up and sing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and grown men would cry like babies under conviction. Yes. What about this water baptismal service? Did well, you baptize? Oh, yes, we were baptized. We went down to the Pacific Ocean, down in Terminal Island, and there always were a couple hundred people that were baptized. And I was baptized. They had to carry me out, but I was baptized there in the Pacific Ocean by, oh, it was wonderful. 70 years ago? 70 years ago. That sounds like the Jesus revival uh, yes, now, uh, doesn't yes, it? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, what, what about uh, this, this great uh, movement that was going on? And, and I just felt uh, that, why did it all break up? Why the divisions? Was it over doctrine? Over doctrine because men got proud and felt that they could do things instead of the Holy Spirit doing things. And any time man gets so proud, like they did at that particular time, it just breaks up something. But thank God it doesn't break up the love of God. Aren't you glad Amen. of that? Was there love in this group? Oh, yes, oh my, yes, just beautiful love. All different nationalities. And all different nationalities. You never knew what you were. 
whether you were black, white, green, or grizzly. Now, but Dr. Sign, you were asking a question a while ago about emotionalism. You remember how they yes. control their meetings? Um, Elder Seymour had a way of uh, knowing when something was not of the Lord and controlling that. What did you say oh, happened when yes. he was upstairs? He would stomp his feet and just stomp his feet, and they knew somebody would get it and say, stand up and say, the spirit isn't right in this place. And if they couldn't stop it, pretty soon Elder Seymour would come down and he would pray. He would just pray until the spirit of God just calmed everything down so beautiful that it was just wonderful how he calmed What about those these uh, evil spirits? And, well, uh, the evil spirits would come. They would come. But God had a way that through these ministers and Reverend Seymour, they pled the blood of Jesus. It was the blood of Jesus that calm the spirit and put them out of the way. Hey, didn't they sing a lot yeah, of songs Saul about the blood? Be, oh yeah, the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you under the blood, the precious blood, under the cleansing. My mother, by the way, she used to sing under the blood so much, we had an old parrot that he sang under the blood. <laughs> really? An old a parrot, parrot, yes, a parrot. <laughs> he sang under the blood, oh. the precious blood, hey, yes. What about these missionaries? Did they go all over the world? They did. Yeah. They went all over the world, and they went because they were called, and people believed that they were called. Mm -hmm. uh, they went, and they came back, and they brought wonderful reports of how God saved the heathen people and how they were brought into the kingdom of God. Um, how did they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Would they lay hands on them or would they receive the baptism and speak with tongues back in the audience? Or did they have a tarrying room or what? Well, they had a room upstairs they called the upper room where you went to tarry for the Holy Spirit. But we could not control the Spirit of God. Sometimes a person would receive the Holy Ghost right in an audience without even an altar call. We just stand right up and begin speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give utter. And sometimes that happens in conversion. A person get under conviction and submit themselves to the Lord. I maintain you don't have to come to a specific place called an altar. You give up in your heart and the Lord will save you then, there, wherever you are. Amen. Uh, Doctor, I, I was am amazed at uh, the same language uh, problem was broken down and people were converted because they heard their language here at this spot. Yes. Did you actually hear people speaking in Chinese, Chinese or Japanese that they Russian. didn't learn? Uh, Russian, they spoke, yeah, black people, red people, they spoke languages, not gibbering, but real languages, and Japanese or those that people would come in and hear them speak in their language, and they would be under conviction. And they insisted that it be a language that would flow and that's sound like right. a language. That's right. Now, and the person didn't know this language. No, 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 they hadn't One learned thing, it. brethren, we have uh, missed in the beginning particularly, a lot of these people came off the streets from gambling houses and hard places of hard uh, and, look, look. and they didn't know about now, church work. They came from many distances, didn't yes. they? There's the oh, train everywhere. station over there and uh, over here is the bus station. Yes. And how far would you say people traveled? Oh, blocks and blocks and sometimes they would come all the way from Pasadena and all these little outlying cities. Where did you come from? Uh, I came from Watts. We lived in Watts and we came and we, many a time we walked, as Lord says, we walked halfway up here in order to get To here. get to what? To get to Azusa Street. Sunday school. Sunday school. Oh, that's good. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Sunday you, school was wonderful. You mean the children loved? Uh, Sunday school, the children loved because the teachers loved it. I'm and interested in the children in this revival. What happened to them? They were saved. Well, did they? Did they they were saved, really saved. Yeah, yeah they got well, saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they sat down in church and just enjoyed the service like any of the older who people. Who did they sit with? They sat with their parents, and sometimes we all sat together, but we didn't talk. Did any of them prophesy? Yes, they prophesied, spoken tongues, and how did they sound when they prophesied? Just like older people. You Good. mean it was a mature word? Oh, yes, real words. They prophesied, and God knew. And we knew that God was using them. Wow, wasn't that a wonderful piece of old film that we were able to show you today? That was done like, I believe, 1975. Of course, Lawrence, Catley, and Maddie Cummings have all gone on to see Jesus and now. And so, I, but what a, what a wonderful testimony of what God does with kids. Now, you notice what they were talking about. There's a few things I want to go back and point out. One, it, the kids were getting saved. They were drawn to the revival to see what was going on in there. And they were getting saved in the midst of it. And then they were getting filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they were speaking in other tongues. 
And then did you hear them talking? I think it was Maddie talking about just how much language, how many languages were being seen. She talked about perfect Chinese and Mandarin and Russian and all these languages that were being spoken. And of course, we know from history, the Armenians that were there, they were hearing their language perfectly. God has a way. When He does it, man, He does it right. He's poured out His Spirit on all flesh, just like He said there, in, you know, back in that Acts chapter 2. He's doing it, and He's doing it again. I wanted you to see that special interview because I love the way they talk about it so many years later. I mean, it's, it was almost 50 years later when that, uh, or 70 years later, when they were able to actually talk about, and you see how they recalled their memories. That was quite an impression for a young child, 70 years later, to be able to hear and remember what God did with them as children. Well, and as you heard, the gentleman there, Lawrence, he went on to pastor a church, and Maddie continued to serve God till she went on to heaven. But what a heritage. What a heritage. And I know you enjoyed hearing, hearing that. And, of course, Vincent Sinan and uh, Ralph Wilkerson doing the interview there. What a, what a great piece of film history that was there uh, talking about Azusa Street. You know, we've talked about Frank Bartleman. And uh, there was a story about Frank he, during the revival when he went to, um, one day he went to the revival. And I know we talked a little bit in a previous broadcast about, you know, presumption. You couldn't be presumptive and people couldn't take the platform if they weren't hearing from God. And they would either, they would forget what they were talking about and have to go sit down or they'd get up and wouldn't be able to talk. Or even some went, were temporarily blinded. I mean, this was so precious of an environment and atmosphere. Things just couldn't happen of their own. You know, nobody knew. He never published, uh, coming up next week, I'll be talking about your righteousness in Christ. No, there was no advertising. There was none other than the word of mouth advertising that went from person to person. Frank Bartleman was out still telling people on the street corners about the revival. And so were many, many, many others talking about what God was doing. But one night, Frank Bartleman was on, uh, he'd had a spat with his wife. And he was on his way to the revival. And he left and he stormed out of the house and walked all over there to Azusa Street to go to the meeting that night. Got just a few feet from the door and got knocked down. What is this? So he gets up, takes a next step back, looks around, goes back, gets knocked down again. So the third time he gets back and he goes, I'm going to get a running start to whatever's knocking me down. So he gets a running start, bam, right back on his backside again. He goes, God, what's going on? He told me, you better go home and make things right with your wife before you enter. You want to go to this meeting where there's a revival going on and God's inside there. You better get your heart right. So he sent him back home. And so Frank Barterman went all the way back home, made up with his wife before he could come back and go to the revival. How wonderful it would be if we all had that same experience. I, don't, I wonder how many of us would be able to enter church sometimes, you know, if we, if we didn't make things right, you know. So get things right. Get your heart right to be able to enter into the revival and be where God is. Amen. Wow. You know, Azusa, there are stories after stories. There's a, you know, if you want to read about uh, stories on what happened there, with those children as told to Tommy Welchel. He has a book out about stories from the great, great revivals of Azusa Street. I suggest you go online and see if you can get that book. Uh, and and it's, it, it's wonderful reading. It will stir your heart and your spirit, man, to see and hear what God did among the children there in Azusa Street. Uh, you know, I, one thing that is so interesting to me, you know, in my own life, as I've shared with you before, God did a thing with me when I was eight years old and 11 years old in a, in a couple of meetings that was huge for my life. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Now, I'm, it hasn't been 70 years, but I can see how those indelible markings of God making a point in your life has its effect on who you are as you get older. You don't forget when God shows up. You don't forget when things happen. You know, and we've talked about, you know, some of the failures of Charles Parham and, and the failures there at Azusa Street. But Charles Parham actually for a while there, he, he did one thing very interesting. He actually, when missionaries would come through, 
missionaries would come through to go out onto the mission field. He would actually send them, I, I guess, as a clearinghouse or go get as a more like a gas station, a filling station, go over to the Azusa Revival and get touched and see what's going on there and then go out. Oh my, the, the stories that have come as missionaries came through and then went out and spread what they heard and saw and experienced at the Azusa Revival. So many things have happened since then. Right now, there's not really anything there. There's no Azusa Street Mission or Apostolic Faith Mission there on Azusa Street. You have to look and find it. But it's not just about the place. And I love something that uh, Lawrence said right there in that interview, is you don't have to get to a place to get with God. You don't have to have an experience only if you got to get to a certain thing and jump through certain hoops. You can have it right where you're at, right now, right where you're sitting. So I want to pray with you just here in these last couple of minutes. Father, sir, I just ask you to touch each person watching this program right now. No matter what time of day it is, Lord, that you would just minister in their lives. Lord, create a hunger in us. Feed that hunger that we're able to seek you and search for our own personal revival, Lord, as you speak to these people. Show us your direction and your ways as we open ourselves up to you and we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you what you're doing in each person's life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, that was a very simple prayer. All I want you to do is reach out and accept that prayer as your own. Yes, Lord, create in me a new heart, if that's what needs to happen. Create in me that revival, that own personal revival that I need to be able to get back. Maybe you need to get back to where you once were. Maybe you were in church earlier in your life and you came across this program just because it was talking about old things. and You saw that old, that old film. Listen, God has a plan for your life. And these are the last days. In the last days, He's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. And that includes you. That includes you. Amen? Amen. Listen, and we want you to go to our Facebook page there. Uh, follow us on Twitter and all of our social media. You'll see some things up there. I, we've got some great guests that we're actually going to interview live here that are going to come in the next few weeks. You're going to want to make sure you're a part. And I have so much more to talk about. Azusa, Wales, Armenian Revival. Oh, my goodness, the Great Prayer Revival of 1857. We have so much to talk about. You're not going to want to miss an episode. But if you have missed, here's what you need to do. Go sign up on the website and download the show notes. Get the show notes because there we'll have a lot of the details and the facts that you can keep in your own, create your own library so that you can go back and then be encouraged. If you're like me, the more I go back and read about these things that happen and watch old clips like the one we saw, man, it's exciting because it's real and it gets down in your spirit and you know, man, thank you God for what you're doing and what you're going to do. And then you can go out, affect your world, and you can be the one. I'll see you next time. Next week on Revival Radio TV. Revival was about to sweep a nation, an empire, an empire, right in the heart of the most unlikely place possible. Next week on Revival Radio TV.